let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Andy and welcome to our first game review and our first video in general here on Screenfire. I hope you had fun with the intro and you can expect that with every game you review on our channel and much, much more. But now let's talk about Dying Light Stay Human. Just so you know, I will not discuss any story spoilers in the video. We talk briefly about the story, but we focus on the gameplay. And of course, everything I say in this video is just my opinion. If you see it differently, tell us in the comments. As you all know, Dying Light 2 was delayed again and again and again. So the big elephant in the room is, is it the second coming of zombie Jesus or is it the Duke Nukem Forever disaster all over again? First time Dying Light 2 was announced was at E3 2018 and the last time it was shown to me was at Gamescom 2019. I had the opportunity to watch some gameplay behind uh, closed doors and two months McTaller, the lead designer of the game, explained everything to us and we could ask him a lot of questions. The game looked good so far, but it crashed several times. And you could tell that it needed at least a few more months in development. So Techland did the opposite of what CD Projekt Red with Cyberpunk did. They delayed it for almost another two and a half years. That's insane. And I mean that in a good way. You rarely see that kind of behavior from gaming companies. So thank you Techland. You're awesome. Question stands, was it worth the wait? Yes, it was. To be fair, you can see that it was longer in development than planned. Graphics are fine for an open world game, but still it feels a little bit more PS4 era-ish. It's not bad at all, just a little bit rough around the edges. The story begins 20 years after Dying Light and you don't need to know anything from part one. To be honest, I've played the first Dying Light and it was a cool game, but if you would ask me any question about the story, I probably couldn't answer it at all. Not only because it was a long time ago, but because the story wasn't that exciting and interesting. Dying Light 2 hooked me right away. We play as main protagonist Aiden Caldwell, um, the virus that was responsible for the first outbreak mutated and this new strain wiped out 98% of the population. So what happens is that people are now living like in the dark ages and are coming together in different factions that of course don't like each other and many of them are just looking for an opportunity to kill the other groups. Because that's how it is in post-apocalyptic scenarios. Aiden is a so-called pilgrim, a freelance runner who is looking for his sister Mia. He enters the city and of course, trouble begins. As said before, I don't want to go into any detail about the story, but the way it's told, the way characters interact with you and their different quirks, it really kept me going. It also helps that the camera is focusing on the characters when you talk to them. Um, I don't know about you, but the moment a game lets me run free during a dialogue, chances are that I look around and explore the environment rather than listening and being invested in what the person is trying to tell me. What really surprised me was the gameplay. I remember that Dying Light felt a little bit clunky and I was expecting some kind of clunkiness with the second part, but it plays so smoothly. The controls don't feel overloaded, although it's a lot you can do. Um, the game always reminds you of what options you have and of course, you can always look it up in the menu. You travel through the city over the rooftops, uh, do your parkour thing and feel like a total badass after a while. Not from the start, but believe me, when you can use wall run, glider or slow motion, it just feels right. Enemies have different levels and some are more dangerous than others, but you can also level up your character as you would expect. 
On the top right side, you can see your player rank and increase it by leveling up your parkour and combat skills. Both of them are on a skill tree to the left and right and if you look down to the middle, you see your health, stamina and your immunity. Yes, your immunity, because we are infected and the moment we don't have the sun or artificial UV lights around us, we begin to turn. I'm very split about that mechanic because, as you can imagine, if you're exploring an empty building, even if the sun is shining, your timer starts and you have limited time to sneak around the dark. And I love to take my time. But, but, it really didn't bother me that much in Dying Light 2. There are several things you can do, like eating mushrooms, for example, uh, to prolong your mutation, and all over the city are UV lights you can escape to. It's the same with underwater levels or sewers. I hate them. But once in a while, there comes a game that gets it just right. And Dying Light 2 is that kind of game. By the way, you can unlock the UV lights by climbing a windmills and change the fuse. It reminds me so much of Far Cry, but in a good way. It just feels so satisfying to explore something, unlock it and see the progress on the map. For me, the story and exploration was what kept me going and it's just so cool how organic they implemented the story or rather the world building elements in the gameplay. As you might know, the zombies are light sensitive, so of course during the day they hide in buildings, so called nests. And I'm not talking about two or three zombies, I talk about 20 or 30. You can't explore that during the day or else you would die in a few seconds. You have to wait for the night when the undead leave the building. That's your only chance. But of course, there are no UV lights in those buildings, so you need to be fast. There are several objects you can only accomplish during the night and it's forcing you to get yourself in more dangerous situations and out of your comfort zone. Of course, crafting is also back. You can find different items and resources and craft health packs, um, throwing knives, Molotov cocktails, lockpicks and so on. Unfortunately, the weapon damage system is also back. That means after some time, they just break. Some weapons also have sockets where you can upgrade them with additional shock damage, for example. And as said, there is a lot you can do and it's easy once you played it for a few hours. But if you forgot something, just check it out in the menu under hints. You know what? We haven't talked about the most important feature of the game yet. The blood and gore, of course. <laughs> it's just so satisfying. It's absolutely unrealistic and over the top and I love it. We try to recreate that in our intro at the beginning with scripts that are blood packs with explosives but it can be pretty dangerous so we just use a small amount of Semtex but it doesn't matter next time we go bigger. Anyway, that kind of violence just belongs in that kind of game. Any post-apocalyptic scenario needs violence because it shows how brutal and raw the world has become. It's not just there to be fun, although it is a lot of fun, but it makes everything more believable and I don't mean realistic, because it's not, obviously. But no matter if you watch a movie or play a game, believability is important. What's also important is how long the game is. How much time can you spend in it? Well, you can finish the main story in 20 to 30 hours and if you want to finish all the side quests, it's about 80 hours according to the developers. And if you want to see every part of the game, if you want to explore every nook and cranny, it's 500 hours according to the devs. I don't know if that's true. Um, from my experience, you see most of the game within 80 to 100 hours. But there's more. Techland promised to support the game within the next five years. We will get new story DLCs, new levels and much more. 
Techland did the same with Dying Light and supported it with content until 2021, so I'm pretty sure they will keep their promise with Dying Light 2 as well. Its release is February the 4th on PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, uh, Xbox Series S and Xbox Series X of course. By the way, I played on PC with an RTX 3080, um, 32GB RAM and an i7-10700K processor. I didn't notice any frame drops and I only encountered one bug that was a floating spear that disappeared after a few seconds, but that was it. Dying Light 2 is in my opinion the best game 2022 so far. That doesn't say much because the year just started, I know. Still, its story is exciting and captivating. The world is big, but just the right amount of big, so it's not overwhelming and frustrating. You have a lot to explore and the missions are entertaining most of the time. The gameplay is rich, but manageable. Um, graphics are good, but don't expect a jaw-dropping moment, even if you have ray tracing on. And yeah, don't buy the German version of the game, because it's cut. It's censored and you can't dismember human enemies and can't kill NPCs. And of course, I did play the Uncut, the international, the only true version of the game. If you like post-apocalyptic zombie roleplay open world games, please check it out. I give Dying Light Stay Human 8.8 .8 out of 10 possible points. You understand nothing. That was our first review and if you enjoyed it as much as we did, please subscribe, leave a like and say hi in the comments. I see you in the next video.